sacrifice will not be forgotten. Don't shoot. No. <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Nine kilometers and closing. Stand by for release. <laughs> oh no, he's trying to get off. He's trying to get Look off. At this guy. It just turned to Anvil Carrick 29, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, he's getting off the ship. I'll deal with him if he does. Well, the ship's still moving, though. How's that possible? Uh, he put it in cruise control. Okay, I'm going to get behind this so the angle doesn't get fucked up. Okay. Oh, no, there's definitely somebody still flying it. Fire! Torpedo probably out. going for... Here we go! Here we go, Cobra! Boom! <laughs> go to prison, baby! I love Woo! it. <laughs> Objective complete. Let's Apprehend see. suspect. Yeah! And this is one. So today we're going to talk about one of my absolute favorite things to do in Star Citizen. Especially coming from my background as uh, you know, the originator and... Um, founder of Bombers Bar from EVE Online, stealth torpedo bombing in Star Citizen. And we need to understand how it works, how to execute on it, as we can see here, how to fire and get results with hammerhead kills. And likewise, that was a player hammerhead. Um, so we need to understand something very important, and that's called transversal. So let's take a look at what transversal looks like when we're at what's known as zero degrees okay in this picture we see a hammerhead advancing onto us as well as we in the eclipse advancing onto the hammerhead right now we have what's called zero transversal however the distance between myself and the hammerhead is getting shorter so there is movement going on right now but because we're in line with the the enemy targets velocity we have zero transversal in this situation, we see the orange dotted line or the yellow dotted line as 3,000 meters, which is around the optimal launching distance. Because after 3,000 meters, a lot of times the stealth bomber especially will get detected. If you're above 300 meters, it's very, very difficult to detect the eclipse. In a lot of cases, you simply won't detect it. So in this situation, we have zero transversal or otherwise known as a perfect shot. Now, the orientation of the hammerhead can change in the sense that it can be facing 90 degrees the opposite direction. But if it's not moving or if it's strafing in the same direction that I am approaching on, the transversal is zero. Because from my position to him, it's all relative. Now, let's take a look at transversal if it's not a perfect shot. So now we see what it looks like to have what in this case would be 400 meters transversal. Okay, so we're outside the 3,000 meter bubble, so we haven't been detected just yet, but we're about to release. The enemy target that we're engaging is moving 90 degrees from my position. So the hammerhead is moving with its bottom thrusters forward. It hasn't picked me up, it doesn't know I'm here, and from my position, I'm shooting broadside from the side of it. In this case, it's left side or port side. When a torpedo gets fired, it now has to adjust for the degrees and distance traveling from the from the hammerhead now if there's flares that come into play the torpedo will again change its course so what we need to do is we need to get very close and reduce the transversal in this case the torpedo will miss very much like this situation here so as we're approaching we can notice that the transversal on the enemy ship we're engaging is quite high i'm still pulling my nose on two or ah, let's say five to ten degrees per second we release the torpedo, but unfortunately, it still misses. Even though he chaffed, that torpedo should have hit um, if our transversal was lower. The problem here was, again, we're going to go for a second shot here. And this, in this case, the transversal is at zero. However, the hammerhead we're engaging is moving towards us. Notice how I change my position so that I'm directly in front of the enemy target I'm engaging. I'm still outside of his detection range. It's a Navy hammerhead. But regardless of whether it's a Navy Hammerhead or not, this is the same mechanic. If this was a player Hammerhead, which you'll see later on, the process still works the same. That right there is what says a perfect shot. We have zero transversal. Boom, there's the bullseye and there's the kill. But the original shot from the beginning of this video 
was a ship with too much transversal, and so we missed the shot. Okay, so now what happens if we don't get the perfect shot, but we're chasing someone down? So this picture I want to show you is something that is going to happen a lot, especially when you're engaging players, because players tend to be moving a lot more than NPC ships. So this picture, if we break it down, we have what's known as a delta or an interception speed of 500 meters per second. So we know the torpedo will fire at around seven to 900 meters per second. I believe the number is sitting around top speed around nine, but you want to release at a lower speed. Unfortunately, sometimes you don't always have that opportunity, which means it's very important that you have a strong shot and low transversal when you take it. So in this case, we're inside the 3000 meter zone. So if we are going to be engaged from somebody, it's going to get it's going to get hairy. So we have to be careful and we have to corkscrew in, which I'll show you in a bit here. Our interception speed is at 500. We know our missile fires at around 7 to 900. So we want to shoot at about 1500 because it's closer than our 3000. Typically, you want to fire at minimum range, regardless of your angle, regardless of anything else, because as soon as your torpedo gets fired, the signature jacks up so high that it actually ends up hiding the Eclipse stealth bomber. So as soon as you fire, you essentially cloak yourself because everything can target the missile, but not you. So in this situation, what we want to do is we want to take the interception speed plus the target velocity, which gives us the range that we want to fire at for a one to two second response time, which is what we want to sit around. Anything higher than that, and you're adding all kinds of problems into the, into the equation. Uh, you know, is the guy going to move? Is he going to flare too much? Is the missile going to bug out? Whatever the case may be. We want to shoot close range, and we want to shoot with low transversal. So let's look at that shot performed in real time. As we're entering the 3000 meter zone, we do get picked up by the turret gunners. That's why we want to always corkscrew our way in and boom, there's the shot. But he's already, again, right? Trying to create angles, trying to create distance, regardless of the reaction. Because we fired with low transversal, because we moved our way in with the corkscrew, because we fired at the proper range, even though he flared, we still get the kill. That is a good execution on the torpedo shot. So as we move on here, and as you guys find yourselves taking shots at players in the Persistent Universe, what you need to always be thinking is, where's my firing zone? If you fire torpedoes willy-nilly, you might get a hit or two. It's going to happen, but a lot of times you're either going to waste your ammo and you're not going to hit the target. Sometimes you got to make a count. So how do we make a count? Well, what you need to do is you need to visualize your firing zone. No closer than 1,000, but no farther away than 3,000. Okay, and it's depending on the velocity vector, not the orientation. This picture shows a hammerhead moving on its main thrusters. However, there are times in a persistent universe where you will fight people, especially hammerheads, that will be moving independent from their vector. So their ship might be facing a completely different direction, but the way their ship is drifting, that's what you should base your shot angle from. What you need to do is you need to find it where that vector is coming from, in this case, where the arrow was pointing, regardless of the ship, you need to get yourself into that firing zone and you need to pull the trigger there. If you can master these simple techniques, guys, you're going to be unstoppable in the Persistent Universe. Even though right now the desync, yes, is a problem. Yes, there's some issues with the game when it comes to, you know, registry, all that stuff. A lot of times, though, you can still get the torpedoes to hit if you execute on these skills properly. And I tell you from personal experience that there is no better feeling of getting a fully crude hammerhead talking shit at you in chat and giving them a nice torpedo delivery. So we'll wrap up the video now. And I just want to say, folks, thank you so much for all the support and all the love you guys have given me. I hope the content you find here you've enjoyed. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Uh, here's the last final shot. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. I'm at 14.3, 13. I've got one torpedo locked on. I'm gonna accelerate. And I wanna stay at around 400 meters and I wanna keep him inside this cone, right? That little cone that you see me, that we have, that's the torpedo lock cone. So 6,000 meters, 5,000, 4,000, 3, 35, 25. Torpedo away. See you later, buddy.
Then that's a hit. <laughs> so I'm not sure if he had... That was a, definitely a player constellation.